that is a, that's a reasonable strategy, right? If you're an awesome crosser, you could play that role of, I grab a ball, cross, put it down here. But if I'm the, the defender in here, as soon as that ball touches the ground, I'm gonna try to get that thing out of here too. Remember, they've got a safe zone right here, right? That you can't get in here, right? So when you come over here to score in this castle, this is your area. But their human player, this little secret passage area here, you can't go in. So if you drop a ball here and, almost, and you're a smart defender, you're just going to push it into your secret passage and then it's out of play. So reasonably speaking, and I always look at like what first, first wants how they want you to play the game, they want each individual team to go grab a ball, hold the ball, cross here, and take it to the hole themselves. Okay? So that's kind of a... The flow of the game. Yeah. Can we scale the tower while scoring? Can you scale the tower while scoring? As long as you first, uh, what's the, the turn for scoring eight times? Yeah. So as long as, so you have to score in the tower eight times before you can hang. Okay. So there's nothing dis distinctly in the rules that we saw that says that you, like, you can still score while you're hanging, but that's one extra ball on top of your hang. You know. So sure. I'm going to go with probably you can. Uh, read the rules, please. Yes. Yeah. So eight scores, general, top or bottom. Yeah. Eight scores, top or bottom, doesn't make a difference. But so that kind of sets, it's a really interesting dynamic because what it means is that a good alliance who scores well has the option for a bonus that a bad alliance can't get. So it really. It's really, it's a bonus for being able to build a robot that can hang, but it's also a bonus for having a good robot. So a good alliance will actually pretty much dominate a weaker alliance this year. So eight scores is a huge, it's going to be tough. Yeah. The, the top is a lot less viable than you think as a scoring option. No. Especially when actually we clarified that earlier. The to capture it, all three robots have to surround it. Surround. Right. And you need to on unique well, yeah. We have some and laser robots that climb the notice when the climb is again. We don't know if that'll be allowed. An aerial assist right. so right. so right. so right. 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 is right. 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 So to get the extra ranking point, just to clarify, you score eight times, you've weakened this castle. At the very end of the match, if all three of your robots on your alliance are either on these platforms, there's little dividers, Based on if you've got one, one, and one, they can guess the distance from that. We can also okay, you'll get you, you get the challenge. Yeah, no, challenge kind of and then that. scale is the hanging ball. Okay? Either one of those actions gets the extra ranking well, point. The difference is the number of points you get in the match. That too. As long as all three areas are challenged. Yeah, you you have to you have to end here. Right, that's basically what it is. You want that extra range point? Yes, and on here. Take a range finder for like hunting. Still counts. It still counts. So the points, right. for, the points for hanging, the points for hanging are per so robot. Like small scope. You so if the castle is weakened, each robot has the ability to get the twenty-five How does it do points. This? Uh, it's five or. So, it, once, this is, once this is open, a team that comes up here and hangs can get 15 points, but if their opponents can't hang, you can all still get the ranking point by being low, but it's 15, 5, and 5, instead of, the best scenario is all three hanging, but maybe we'll see that in All we have to do is reverse engineer and then feed yes. to the computer. No, are you ever allowed for robots? No, it's, 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 okay, so it's, it's, it's an excellent question. Okay, so this year, the, the question is, can you destroy other robots? Um, yes. We all saw BattleBots back on TV. That's excellent. We'll watch that fun and have that robot enjoyment as a, at a different time. But when it comes to first, your goal is to design and build a robot that best competes in the game. And uh, part of gracious professionalism uh, is competing fiercely, <laughs> but not doing it at the expense of another team. What right? Robots? There are rules against blockading the field. There are rules against pinning. You can pin for up to five seconds. Um, you can't have like if like there's one really good robot. That's all they've got. You can't sick two robots on one and blockade the field and block them. There's some there's some rules about those. I didn't go too deep in that, but generally speaking, you'll be much better off to design a robot that completes the task at hand rather than worrying 
any robot the that can drive can play defense, contact. but don't make defense your primary system. strategy. Okay. No, but why only five seconds, man? What if yeah. Well, well, because it's the game goes real fast. It uh, comes only like a minute or two. Really? So, yeah, five seconds counts for a lot. Yeah. So, you're right. So the question was, if you hang and you fall on our opponent's robot, does that count? Well, there's two things. You have to get points. You have to be hanging at the end of the match to get the points. And during the last 20 seconds of the match, the opponent cannot be touching this area. So the odds that you fall on an opponent's robot is probably pretty small because they're going to get a technical foul and your robot's probably going to be broken. So try not to do that. Yeah. Batteries rolling low. Yeah, that's going to be fine. Actually, I think it's just... Well, that's, that's a poor yeah, strategy four choice. Uh, <laughs> the, the, question, the question was, what if your robot hangs and it's designed to hang and then score a ball and then it falls off because it's scoring the ball? And my answer is that's a poor strategy choice and it doesn't. Um, my recommendation is probably like, if you're scoring during the match, score the last ball you have and then hang. I mean, it, the timing is about the same, right? If it takes you two seconds to score a ball, it takes you five seconds to hang. Like, that's the same seven seconds, regardless of order. So, um, play this out, right? These time challenges of like how long things take, important part of this. You've got 20 seconds to hang, so if you build a robot that hangs in, I don't know, 21 seconds, it's probably not a good choice. I would argue that if you're gonna try to build a hanging robot, you're probably gonna wanna do it in 10 seconds or less. Yes? Perfect. No. What's considered hanging is you need to be above the low goal. The bumpers. The bumpers. Right. So the bumpers above the low goal. So that's, I mean, that is almost a 15 inch elevation. Can you? The bumper zone is actually 2 inches. Okay. So the bumpers, the bumpers go from 4 inches off the ground to 12 inches off the ground. You can put them anywhere in that zone. So if you happen to put your bumpers, 12 inches off the ground, and then you you have a lot less distance to, to hang. Um, I will, so that's something you can think about for your robot design. Are there? Yeah. Yes. What about spying at the beginning of the match? Uh, I mean, no, you can't do that. It sounds like a really, so the question is, can you put your robot, so the robots have to start in the zone. What? Oh, you can. Oh, okay, cool. I missed that, I totally missed that rule. Like I said, like I said, we had 20 minutes to read the rules. Hopefully what we're saying is helpful, but I still recommend that you do what Aaron said and actually sit down as a team and read all of the rules. But yes, there's some way to start over here. Yes? For the audience choice of the obstacle, does that audience choice obstacle always go in the same position? Yes, it's yes. always in the third position. Third in the middle. Third from which direction? It's always the middle. So the audience position is always the more impactful one. Um, where you place these obstacles may play a pretty good role because, for example, if the you know that that curtain's always going to be there and you always know that something's going to be in the middle. So, you know, if you put high barrier ones here and teams are using like vision tracking and stuff, it may mess them up for when they climb over, but you can't score from the middle anyway, so whatever. Yeah. Um, that's an excellent question. Yeah, so, we can go through all of them, but if you look through the rules, they specifically outline these categories A through D or E, I believe, yeah. and identify which uh, of the barriers belong to each. They're, they're, they're pair matched based on similarity. So, you can kind of make a guess that, like, with, I don't want to say the wrong one, but like, like the, um, this, so, yeah, so like, man. this guy, and the and this are in the same category, right? The rock wall and the rock and the rough terrain are in the same category. Right. So th there's a there's a chart of that. But you the best thing that you're going to be is the more obstacles you can climb over, the better off you're going to be. Um, I will say though, uh, this is a very difficult field to build. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to say two things. So, one thing that's really important, okay, and, and, and please, this one is, is big, okay, 
when you're prototyping with the field, okay, we have experience building this, this field in both the real materials and the wood materials. I promise you they are different, okay? And you can take a look at that right on the field. If you build the wooden version, you get these wooden blocks. You get these two by fours. You get this. The edge on these pieces of wood will conform to tires very, very differently than a rounded over steel tube. Okay, your coefficient of friction will be different. So, when you've gone over obstacles, see if there are ways to pick ones that make sense, like ones that you have to drive over, like you hit the edge. Those are ones you may consider building a stand-in of a real one, even if it's just like, you know, putting a strip of aluminum or steel ankle on the corner so you know you're engaging it. It's really a very painful thing when teams build the wood obstacle and then get to the regional and the field is slightly different. Um, so 2848, had, oh, I'm gonna just gonna announce this. So 2848, um, we have a, a half practice field. Uh, 3005 will have a half practice field. 1296 will have a partial practice field. There's a bunch of teams in the area that already have some of this stuff and they'll have it available. Um, 2848, my team, um, on February 20th is hosting a pre-bag and tag practice event at our school with a full field. So it's a free event, there's a flyer in your bag that your team members has, all we ask is you register. So please register, but it's totally free. Uh, show up on the 20th from noon to like 5.30. There'll be plenty of time to practice and whatever, so if you can only build one or two of these elements, on that day before you at least get I all of Yes. So so when it so the question was when a team is choosing obstacles, can you pick more than one of the same type? And the answer is no. It's it's you only get one type of fortification. Of each type. So you have nine options to fill three slots. Yes. From a, from a, the question is, is there a damage difference from the bottom of the castle to the top? And in terms of weakening the castle, there's no difference. In terms of points, there is a difference. So, yes? Are you allowed to drive in your alliance, like, secret tunnel zone, like it falls, like boulders? So, if it's your alliance's secret passage, you can do that. Right, that's the point. That's where the balls enter. So like, okay, so so here's, it's just, we can walk through this really quick. So like, here's the blue alliance, right? So blue, your robot is trying to score down here, okay? So when you're, when you want to go get a ball, you basically, assuming you don't find a random boulder that's been lost by another opponent, they're going to come from your human player down here in this zone. So this is a zone where only, so your castle essentially extends this wall and this passageway. Um, you can still drive out here, this is your courtyard, you can go for a walk or smell the flowers, but like, this is the business end. You know? Yeah, one robot, so you have to stroll alone. <laughs> yes, the human player can introduce a ball either at the bottom or the top. So the really interesting thing, and this is a game feature we'll point out, is this is a kind of a drop human player station at the top. So for example, if you had like a top look catapult or you had something like that, you could back your robot up or go forward and your human player could quite literally just drop it straight down into your robot um, as opposed to getting it from the floor. I will say though, it traditionally in shooting games, if you can build a robot that can pick up a ball from the floor, it is highly advantageous from the standpoint of, oh hey, I, I don't have a ball, but I've just crossed back over here, and oh, there's a ball sitting on the floor over here, as opposed to having to run all the way to the other side of the field to get. Um, think about ball control also, because you have to cross with the ball in tow. So if you just have an open basket or a carrier or something, you don't want to like, oh, I got the ball over here, and just like, oh, and then the ball falls out. So 
There's a lot of little subtlety to the mechanism. In the end, this game is a build a drive that can go over as many obstacles as you can and build a robot that can score points, either low or high, and then add hanging or not. Those are kind of your priorities and your base ones, but you also need to think about how you're going to hold that ball. You've got to think about how many obstacles you're going to go over. I mean, like they said in the video, there's almost 10,000 variations, so it's likely that you will never see a match with the same set of obstacles. Okay? Questions? Yeah, back to the scoring. I think you might have heard this, just to test my understanding. Let's say two bots from the same alliance cross the obstacles and attempt to score. Yes. One of them misses the upper objective, and now the ball is just rolling around. Can the other robot pick up that ball and score again? Or can it only can you only score with the ball that you yourself carry across the obstacle? Okay, so the question is, is like if two robots carry balls over, they score, one of them scores and one of them misses. Can the one that scored pick up that other ball and then score it? I, I suspect yes. The only rule about the ball thing is that you have to, the only way to move a ball from here to there is through 